Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Vectorworks 2023 video and today we're going to be looking at some 3D modelling for a simple building just to show you some of the new offset edge tool and capabilities that Vectorworks 3D has. We'll be running through things like texturing and a bunch of other stuff as well. Now this video was actually made on an aeroplane so if it's a little bit rough and ready please forgive me but hopefully you'll see how straightforward and easy the modelling is. Let's get into the video and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks very much. Okay, so the first we're gonna do is use the new heads up display to pop into 3D view. Just tap the space bar to activate that and you'll see that we're in the 3D isometric view. I'm basically gonna tab in and use my rectangle tool just to draw a rectangle and push and pull. Now I'm immediately gonna go onto my polygon tool and double double check that I'm working on the automatic plane. So you can see the face highlighting in purple, which means I'm drawing on that vertical face. And this is a very easy way to just add a little pitched roof to this building. So let's just tab in and put some dimensions in. When I close the shape, you'll see that when I push and pull, it automatically gets add added as long as that's the mode you've got selected. Okay, so we're gonna to go to the 3D modeling palette. And one of the things that I like to do is drag this palette off into uh, the drawing area, just so I've got a bigger view of the tools there. You can see we're going to go to the extract tool and I'm just going to extract that end sort of gable face. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I just want to make a quick offset, maybe like 600 mil offset, uh, so that I've got a sheet of glass that I can see use in a moment. So basically, I'm just going to cut that shape away for a second. And now basically what we're going to do is go for the new wonderful offset edge tool. Notice I'm on the second mode to offset all edges. And what we can do again is tab in that 600 mil. And now we can basically push and pull into the face. Now there was the sheet of glass. So if I just use the cut command for a moment, or extrude rather, just so I can actually extrude that piece of glass, you'll see what's going on. And let's move it. So I'm gonna use the move 3D command. So the good shortcut there is command alt M. And basically I can tab in X, Y, or Z. Let's move it in the, the Y direction. And basically let's delete that original extracted face. So here you can see the sheet of glass. So I'm gonna put that into my glazing clear glass and now you can see what's going on. Basically, we've hollowed out the uh, shell of the building using the offset edge tool and pushing and pulling all the way through. So next up, I'm going to basically offset uh, this edge from the glass, if you like. Let's go for about 150 and let's just push and pull, immediately push that glazing area out a little bit just to give ourselves a little bit more there. And what's nice is now I can basically use my extracting tool to extract the edge so that I can basically extrude that and give it a different texture. So do remember you will only be able to sort of texture individual uh, materials and things if they're separate objects. So sometimes that's quite important. So I'm going to extrude that say 200 mil and let's move it back into uh, 150 into the model again. Okay, great. So you can see I've hollowed out the building and I've got a nice little bit of glazing on the end here. So now I'm gonna go forward with the polygon tool, the double line polygon tool in fact. And basically I'm going to snap to that center point. By using the U key, I can toggle through the different modes up on the mode bar. And finally holding down the B key will give me X-ray view. So finally I'm going to extrude that with the shortcut Control E or Command E on the Mac. And basically just use the eyedropper tool to match properties so that that looks like it's made of metal as well. Now, um, one of the things you may not be aware is Vectorworks has multiple views and you can basically set this up uh, with a click. So I've set this up with the shortcut key, but basically you'll notice up on the mode bar near the orthogonal uh, drop down, there's a little button and basically that will take you into multiple views. Now, this is amazing because it means that you can work across all four views if you've got a nice big screen and basically we can kind of snap across. As I said, I was making this tutorial on a aeroplane, um, <laughs> so it was quite a tight seat and I only had my laptop, but I was still able to use this multiple views just to kind of get in there. And basically you can see with the Z key, I was able to snap in and so on as well. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and let's just basically come out of the multiple views. Um, basically let's close that particular pane and let's kind of close this one as well, just so we've got the two views. That gives me a little bit more space. So we've got the nice 3D view. We can see what's happening. 
and in our 2D sort of elevational view, we can kind of carry on working. So we're going to drag off a copy of that mullion and duplicate. Okay, so we're going to pop back into single screen view. Again, I've got my uh, special workspace, my enhanced workspace that I've developed with a shortcut key that I use to do that. Um, so we're going to basically extract the face of this roof now. And let's extrude it um, with the shortcut. So Command E, or you can use the push pull tool if I prefer, Shift R for the push pull tool. So many people like to use push and pull, but Command E works just as well. Let's pop this into uh, a new class. So we're going to call it roof hyphen uh, zinc. And basically what we're going to do is assign the materials or should we say the textures through the class. Now this is definitely the best way to assign materials and textures uh, through class because it means that you can rapidly edit the model later just by editing a single class. So make sure you do that. Now you can see I've got this nice sort of zinc texture onto the model. Okay, great. So let's mirror that across to the top of the ridge. Just see if I can snap into that midpoint there. And we should have now two zinc roofs, which look really cool. Okay, let's zoom in a bit here and let's just add uh, the ridge here. So basically, I'm going to click my circle tool. And basically, I'm just going to move those back ever so slightly. Oh, wrong way. Let's just move them forward a little bit, just so they kind of overlap the edge. Okay, great. So let's get six for my circle tool. And again, I'll be drawing on this automatic face here, just so I can kind of snap nicely. And then I can immediately just push and pull uh, with the shape still selected, actually, just right the way back. Let's just pan across. Use the eyedropper, of course, just to match that material. That will match both the texture, but also the class as well. Okay, so we've now matched the texture there. That's looking really, really good. And um, let's crack on with some work onto the sides, basically. So what I'm gonna do is just mirror this uh, extra panel back to the rear. And let's just use our fly around tool to have a little inspection of what we're doing. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is use the texturing tool for a second. And basically the texture face tool is a new tool that was added in 2022. Very, very cool. It means that you can actually just click and texture individual faces. And this makes it really easy for you to basically, instead of texturing the entire object, for example, just texture the face of those external sides with a nice sort of timber boarding, for example. So really, really nice way to uh, texture per face. Okay, good, it's looking good. So what we're gonna do next, I think what we need to do now is basically just push and pull these roofs just to get a bit of an overhang on both sides. And you can see how easy this is. Shift and R is the push pull tool. And basically it just kind of extends those edges. Um, so we can easily kind of get a nice little bit of an overlap there. Okay, great, it's looking good. So let's pop into the isometric view one more time. And now I'm going to basically click six for circle, push and pull immediately through uh, the wall, if you like, just to create a hole. So I really wanted a kind of nice circular window on this project for some reason. And then I'm going to use the edge offset tool. Okay, and one of the reasons I wanted to show you this is how it works on non-planar faces. Now this is something that would have been really a bit more tricky to do, could have been done uh, by solid subtractions. But now you can see it's very easy for me to directly model. And basically I've used uh, an extraction command there and also just a quick shell to give that beef up with a bit of a thickness there. And let's just kind of beef up the inside. Let's go inside so that I can kind of give that a nice sort of dark metal kind of finish as well. Now you notice uh, the new color palette popping up there in Vectorworks, and I'll be doing some videos on this new feature later as well. But the new color palette in 2023 has been dramatically overhauled and is a great improvement. Okay, good. So we've got a nice kind of round window. Uh, we've demonstrated how uh, effective the new edge offsets tool is on even sort of non-planar and curved surfaces. Let's have another little go on this one here. So I'm going to use my edge offset on the single mode this time. And basically, I'm just going to offset the single face or edge, if you like, from that front edge. So what we'll do, we'll just kind of push this back a tiny bit just to kind of show how easy that is. Um, you'll notice the texture sometimes flips around. We could correct that if needed, um, but it's very, very straightforward to do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and punch another opening through the model. And basically, I just want to kind of use the G B key and the G key just to align to that datum there. Let's just pop back across. And you can see it's very easy with this push-pull modeling to align, push and pull, 
and then basically as long as I go deep enough, uh, which I didn't actually quite go deep enough, you'll see I would have subtracted right through. Um, that's okay. So basically with the push-pull tool now, um, you can basically edit the history just by double clicking, going in a bit more and let's basically expand the depth there just to make that depth a bit bigger. Okay, that's cool. Good, okay, so uh, you can see this is all very, very easy in terms of 3D. Uh, I really like the OpenGL rendering that Vectorworks does and it's very responsive. And you'll notice there's a nice new sort of slightly accelerated sort of view change as well. It's pretty subtle, um, but that will be something that you'll enjoy as well. Let's just extrude a couple of sheets of glass here. It's already gone into the right class, so we can duplicate and rotate. And let's use our Z key just to kind of super zoom, if you like, and get in there nice and easily. Uh, this definitely helps when I'm working on the plane, just to kind of use the Z key, because I can't zoom in and zoom out as easily with the trackpad. Um, I've got no mouse, I'm using my trackpad on my laptop. And all of this modeling is being done in real time, as you can see. Okay, great. So let's just correct the uh, slight extra overlaps there. I think I was aligning to the roof above. So select those, go to top plan. And let's just put those in the glazing class. But I think, yeah, because they're in top plan, I just need to stretch them back a bit more. Okay, so one of the pleasures of Vectorwitz 3D for me is that you have the full range of 2D sort of capabilities that Vectorworks has, but you also have these amazing 3D tools which have fantastic history-based modeling. And, you know, the direct modeling plus the history-based modeling really, for me, makes Vectorworks an unbeatable 3D modeler. Okay, great. So it's all looking really, really good. I'm now going to use something called an auto-hybrid um, from the AEC menu of Architect. And what you're going to notice is suddenly it looks like this is a, a cut through plan. So basically I'm going to turn on above the cut, display the extents above the cut, and I'm just going to create a quickly a new class. And let's just pop them in that class above cut. Now the 2D graphics of this class are red dotted pen. So hopefully you can understand what's going on with this project now. You can see I'm basically cutting through the roof and basically I'm able to sort of see exactly what the project looks like in plan and 3D. Now finally, we're going to go ahead and use the create multiple viewports command. And while it looks a bit of a mess at the moment, we'll sort this out to create a full set of coordinated drawings of our project. And you can see basically I've got plan, section, elevations, well no sections rather, elevations and isometrics. Now we can align and distribute those viewports with the align and distribute command. Let's align them to the bottom, distribute in the other direction with spacing, just to get those nicely lined up. So that's looking a lot better, and we'll just shift those across a bit more. I'm also going to pop down and render those using shaded view. Okay, and there's some nice new options in here we'll talk about at some point. Let's just for now just click update. And those will take a second just to render up with that shaded view. So here's the uh, plan, if you like, or roof plan, rather. There's a little 3D as well. I think what we'll do is let's just update all of those using shaded view as well. So once again, let's scroll to the top, click update. Very, very rapid. Okay, there's another drawing that I would like. So I'm just going to navigate back to the design layer, and I'm going to use the clip cube function. Now, you've seen my videos before. Um, you'll know how much I love the clip cube and what an amazing tool this is, just to create some interactive sections of our project. So with the right click, I can now create a section viewport and just pop it onto the same sheet. And literally within a second or two, I've got a nice little kind of basic section of that project as well. Um, I also really love the fact you can basically put these into a rendered mode, so shaded. Let's do shaded there. And finally, let's just put that into perspective. So if we can just scroll down a bit further down, there we go, there's the perspective view. And once again, I'll click update and you've got a little kind of 3D perspective section. Now I know there's not a lot of detail in here at the moment, but you know, it's just very early days and it's looking good so far. Now I'm just gonna move this annotation drawing label uh, down and then pop out into the drawing again. Now, one of the nice things that I can do to improve the quality is just edit the DPI of the sheet. Uh, the default is very low, so let's up that to 300 dots per inch, and we'll click OK. Just before, though, I go and do the update, um, if you'll notice if I click into the rendering options, let's just make sure uh, they're all selected. OK, so they're all in high detail now. Let's click Update and re-render those. 
And basically, it'll take a few seconds longer because these are rendering now at 300 DPI rather than 72. But the quality will be significantly higher. And you can see that if I actually zoom in, the quality is looking really, really good. So yeah, there we go. Okay, fantastic. So the final thing that I need to do is just create a normal plan. But the good thing is because I've got my uh, auto hybrid there, you can see it actually looks like a proper architectural plan cut through the roof at the height that I specified. Um, so let's shrink that down and let's just shrink this one down as well to create a little bit more space. So we'll just zap those to one to 100 scale and we'll align those as well, just so they're nicely lined up. Uh, just watch out for the annotations. That was why it didn't quite align there. Okay, that's cool. All right, fantastic. It's looking really, really good. Um, what I'm now gonna do is select all of the rendered viewports and go down to the rendering options. And one of the things I'll be talking about in future videos is these new amazing options for environmental lighting and reflections as well. Now, we're not gonna get a lot going on in this particular project um, because we don't really have any environments, but let's just see what would happen if we did drop in maybe an HDRI and click update. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out, but let's see. Okay, so we'll click okay and wait for a few seconds for it to render. You'll notice now it's gonna take a little bit longer and yeah, we've got some nice sort of HDRI background and there's a little bit more subtlety to the lighting. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As you can see, modeling in Vectorworks in 3D is super easy, really, really effective and extremely powerful. And honestly, I am just scratching the surface in this video. So if you do want some training, let me know. I do this globally via Zoom and all sessions get recorded for you. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye bye.